Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. The other day I did a haul video and asked you what you wanted to see me review or use first, and by and large, by far, it was the Primo watercolor coloring book and paint, so that's what we are going to check out today, and I'll have a little tutorial, painting tutorial for you too, which will be kind of fun. Um, so what I got from Prima was the tropical set of colors, and you can see the tin right here, and also the classics. And here's the tin. And now they also came out with a collection called Decadent Pies, which are more of your neutrals and metallics. I did not get that set, but um, we're gonna take a look at these two. And also the watercoloring book. And um, so this weekend, my daughters and I actually did a lot of these pages. We had just had a lot of fun experimenting with these paints. And um, I'm gonna show you some of the examples here. I really like the designs. I think what I'm gonna do is actually string a um, clothesline in my office, because my office upstairs is kind of drab, and um, pin some of these up, because I think they're really kind of fun. Um, now the paper on these is more of a student grade paper. It actually reminds me of the Ben Fang paper, if you've ever used that. So you can't really lift away very well, and um, I think it's kind of undersized, meaning it's harder to blend. So I'd actually recommend the book here for watercolor pencils. If you have the Prima pencils, I just um, quickly colored that one in with the pencils. They were released last year. A lot of you guys got them. So I would definitely recommend using the pencils with the book. I think you'll have a lot more um, joy. But I did all these with the uh, with the paints. They're just It's just a little bit. You kind of have to... Um, my daughter did this. The, uh, my daughter Lila did this one. Um, you just kind of have to let go of the perfection if you're going to use the watercolor paints because it's going to be hard to get into some of the little details. I just wanted to let you know that. Maisie did that one. Um, actually, my, my kids did more than I did out of this book. I just think they're so pretty and inspiring and I love the speckle. I think Lila did that one. Um, she loves the black paint <laughs> from the set. She's like, oh, the black paint is so creamy. I love it. And, you know, just, just a lot of fun. Um, so this is giving you an idea of the designs that are in here. Some are very simple and you can have fun with the backgrounds. Some are much more detailed. My daughter Maisie did this one. I thought that was kind of fun. Um, so there's florals. There's inspiring quotes. Um, lots of lots of brush lettering things so if you want to practice your brush lettering you can kind of go around with your brush now i will tell you these are tiny little spaces to get into so just try not to freak and get um overly perfectionist with this just try to have a good time this would be a really good one for practice um and so i don't have too many that are left undone you do get quite a few pages in here which is nice. So I'm just flipping through so you can see all the designs. That's cute with a little gnome. Again, I would definitely grab the watercolor pencils for this because it might be tricky to get in there with the details um, using a brush. But there's very, very pretty um, vignettes. And I think I, I really like them. They were they were fun to do, but you know, they might be a little aggravating if you're not um, if you're a perfectionist. So there's uh, 24 sheets in there. I just wanted to get that cover so I could tell you that. Okay, so something else I came out with, which is kind of fun, is um, a watercolor panel. And I haven't tried this yet. I'm going to open it up right now. Use my little knife to slice it here so I don't go through my paper. I believe it feels like it's, at least tapping on it, feels like it's just watercolor paper on like a, maybe like a cardboard substrate. But, um, but you'll be able to hang it. There are little holes in the back so you could put a little nail or a tack in the wall and hang it up. So we're gonna actually work on this today and we're gonna paint some tulips. And I also am gonna use the um, water brushes. They've got some new ones. Now the round ones came out last year, I believe, and I actually have a set of them. And my, my daughters really love them. They're quite high quality. I think they're about seven or eight dollars for the two pack, so they're a lot cheaper than a lot of the other water brushes. But they come to a really fine point and they're probably some of the most detailed ones that I've used. Um, and I've used the Niji, the Caran d'Ache. Um, I would put them second to Caran d'Ache, but I like them um, better than the Niji. I like them better than the Aquaflow. Um, they're just they're just a good value. They're much better than the Royal um, water brushes because they don't have a velvet on. They leak too much. These are these are really nice. They constantly feed water. So that's something to, to uh, once you get it going, they're going to constantly feed. Um, as opposed to, I think that the Caran d'Ache and the Niji, you actually have to squeeze every once in a while. These just kind of feed it for you. At least the round ones do. And I have not used the uh, flat ones yet, but I did just, um, I'm going to squeeze some water through them to remove sizing. Um, but I will be using those today. Um, I have used a flat water brush before and honestly have not been that crazy about it. But I'm going to give this a try and, uh, and see what I think. I'm just going to take the caps off now so I can have these 
ready to go. But again, I love the, the round ones, my old round ones that I got a year ago. Their uh, their tips are stained, but they still work great. And um, so let's get to it. Speaking of staining, I did notice the palettes stained a bit. Um, I could probably you know use a soap on them. I didn't clean them with soap. One thing to keep in mind, I'm trying to see which one it happened to. Um, I was like trying to bend the prongs around the pans because these come all wrapped up individually and I pulled this out. So um, I'll show you here. You can take out this middle part. It seemed to have just been put down with a little bit of like double-sided tape so I could tape that back in. Um, the pans, it may shift around a little bit in there. I couldn't get these pinched tight enough to hold them tight, but whenever I've used the half pans in the past from other companies, it, they once you start painting with them and you get the paint messy in there, they kind of glue themselves into place. So I really wouldn't worry about that too much. These are standard size half pans, meaning that you can, um, if like you run out of that green and you're like, well, I, I think I'll I'll maybe try an artist grade. These say they're artist grade, but I really wouldn't consider them artist grade like a, like a Winsor Newton artist or an M. Graham. I would definitely consider them more um, along the lines of like a Cotman uh, watercolor paint. They're very pigmented, meaning they come right out like as soon as I touch a wet brush to them. But um, but I, I they're they're if you look at my swatches here, I think this will explain it a little bit better. So I did swatch them out just so I could see what the colors were. Now they're um, they're quite solid. They're semi opaque. There's not like a lot of times when you look at like this ultramarine blue. If this was an artist great ultramarine blue, you'll see these different granulations in there. You'll see the actual like pigment from the minerals kind of um, uh, being sedimentary kind of clumping or you just see this more the more of a texture within the color these colors are very um, are very uniform and flat which is not a bad thing at all but it's just you know kind of says okay these probably are, are hues and not real pigment not real mineral pigments um, just little things you that you would garner from experience but I don't want to dissuade you because these sets are $25 versus you know $100 for an artist grade set of half pans but say you use up the ultramarine blue and you love that color you could then go buy a half pan of Windsor Newton ultramarine blue and replace it you know and you could slowly build up an expensive artist set without putting out too much money at once which I like so um, I'm gonna start by sketching on some tulips with some of my um, Primo watercolor pencils that I've had for like a year because I figured that would be a great kind of a great way to get started here I'll start with one of these I don't, I'm not gonna use this much for the pigment just for more for just sketching I'm gonna do some orange tulips and I'm going to start by just putting, now I know I'm not, uh, well, I suspect if this is the same paper that the, um, that the coloring pages are on, I suspect that it might not lift very well. So I'm being very light with my sketching on of the tulips. Okay. I'm going to start back here. I'm going to go a little bit darker. I'm going to put where I want my stem to be right there. And I'm going to pull that in. I'm just going to sketch everything with orange. I think it'll be easy for you to see. I don't think it's going to give me any problems because orange is going to be the dominant color in these flowers. So over here, uh, I'm going to get the little, little stamens there in the middle, put some petals on there. These are like uh, almost like parrot tulips, very, very ruffly, very pretty. I love, oh my gosh, it's been so cold. That's why we stayed inside and, and painted all weekend because it was so darn cold. It was like negative 14 yesterday. It's negative eight right now, but it's supposed to warm up to a balmy 20 degrees. And then it'll be like 40 something tomorrow, which is like crazy. That's the weather in Maine for you. <laughs> but yeah, it was definitely a good, a good Valentine's weekend to stay in and paint. And oh, by the way, I'll put a link to this, this, uh, reference photo that I'm using. It's from a wonderful website called Paint My Photo. If you're new to my channel and you've never heard of it before, it's a wonderful um, reference, uh, a site for artists reference photos. I can't recommend it enough. Um, the photographers agree to let artists use their work, their uh, photographs, to create paintings for commercial or non-commercial use. And But the, the um, photographers still get to retain copyright um, on the photographs. So you can't just like, I can't, I can't print off this and like, like put it on my website or anything. I can't download it, but I can give you the link so that you can go get the um, the photo for yourself. So really, really awesome website. Totally go check it out. And, and all the information on the photographer will be in the video description. I just have the download on my screen right now, so I can't see that person's name at the moment. So apologies there. And I'm just putting the petals on for this flower up here. Here we go. I know, isn't this exciting? But 
um, maybe this will help you learn to draw things. I don't know. Basically, I just kind of get like a, the, a circle or whatever the shape is to kind of unify everything. And then I just start throwing in my, um, my other lines. I'm just kind of copying what I see with my eyes. That's all drawing is, folks. Putting down what you see. And that's the hard thing. That's why I recommend people actually trace. Because sometimes your brain will tell you you see one thing. And that's not really what you see at all. So when you trace, you're actually putting down what's there. And that can be a very powerful um, a very powerful way to learn. I'm going to put one more petal back there. And sometimes you can add a petal if you feel like it's unbalanced. Okay, so we've got our basic uh, sketch in there. And now I'm going to grab one of these flat water brushes because I've never used them before. I'm going to take the medium sized one there and I'm just squeezing a little water. I've got a paper towel over here. I just want to make sure I could get that going. I typically don't use flat brushes that much, but I figured it might be kind of fun here. And I'm going to go with the yellow that I believe is the closest. I'm going to use the yellow on this. I'm just going to slide all this over. Use the yellow on the tropical set here. I think I'll squeeze a little bit out into the pan. Now I recommend you swatch out your watercolors so that you can see exactly what you have. It does make it a lot easier. I'm going to go in here and just put some of this yellow right there in the middle because that's where the, the flower is the lightest. Then I'm going to go and grab a little bit of this orange, which actually kind of looks like a, like that yellow is kind of like a cad yellow if you're following along with another set. This orange is like a um, cadmium orange or a cad red light. And I have to say, I am pretty impressed with the quality of the paints, you know, because when I saw, you know, like, oh, $25, what can you make for, you know, for retail $25 for paints? I didn't really know what kind of quality they would end up with. These are made in Korea. Um, I'm not sure, you know, a lot of times the craft companies will have things private labeled by, you know, bigger companies that kind of private label for a lot of places. I don't know what the story is with these, but I, um, I really liked them. The colors flow okay. They're not as um, as flowy as some, meaning like the colors aren't just like kind of blending in with each other, but uh, some of that can be the paper. Now I think I'm going to skip over to this one now and to clean my uh, the brush, I'm just kind of squeeze it until, you know, it comes out pretty clear. And then um, I'm probably going to switch to a round pretty soon because I'm much more comfortable using a round brush. Now, I specifically did a picture that I didn't think I'd have to lift very much on because I think that's going to be um, be the limitation of this paper. All this paper doesn't really feel like the stuff in the coloring book, so I don't know if they maybe sized it or sealed it or something because it was going to be a uh, um, because it was going to be on like a canvas support. But it does feel it does feel different. It feels a little bit smoother and it feels a little bit more uh, blendable. So like it has a little more sizing in it. So in case you're wondering on those, I don't think these are terribly expensive. Um, I'm thinking I saw them at Simon Says Stamp for three or four dollars. You know, more than a sheet of paper. So you know, there's that consideration. Um, you know, something you could do if you absolutely you know if you loved if you did a painting on regular paper and you really loved it and wanted to try something like this, you could always. Uh, glue it to a support like this. It's always an option. Although I'm a big believer, if you really love the work, you put it under under glass with a mat because that's really going to make it uh, a lot more durable. It's going to make it last a lot longer. I'm just squeezing out some of the extra um, water and I'm going into the classic set and I'm grabbing some of the green. It's kind of like a permanent green light, I would say. That's what that color is. And I'm going to add a little bit of that in here. A little bit in some of the areas over here too, because you do see a little bit of that green. And I'm also going to do the stem. And I'm not worried about this being so bright because that orange that I sketched it with is going to brown it a little bit. You'll have to let me know what you think. If you've tried these watercolors, I don't know how. I know Simon Says Stamp has them. A lot of stores don't have them in yet. Um, let me know what you think of them. If you've tried them. I know a lot of you guys are waiting for them. I got mine directly from the uh, from the company. So I got a little, little bit of a sneaky peek there. That's fun. I like trying new things. So 
I need to try new supplies. And so I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually um, um, pretty impressed with these. I still prefer a round brush, and I think I'm going to go to to the larger of the two Prima round brushes. So the round brushes have the clear um, barrels and the flats have the purple, so it's kind of makes it a little easier if you are trying to paint from home. You know, you're trying, you're at your table and you're trying to figure out what's what. It just kind of takes a little bit of the guesswork away. And I'm going to go right into this petal here. I'm going to put in some of my darker colors. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that that uh, yellow and just kind of blend it in. These are pretty good for water for water brushes, but I have to say I probably would prefer just using a regular watercolor brush if I'm home sitting at my table using these. That's just my personal preference. But I'm telling you, sitting in the living room, you know, watching TV with the kids and painting, those water brushes are awfully nice. And these are good quality and they are a good value. I think the, um, I'm thinking that the flats may be $10 for the three pack, somewhere on there. You can go in with the um, watercolor pencils too if you feel like you want a little bit more definition while the paint is wet. Although I will let you know that if you do that, you won't be able to lift it out quite so easily afterwards. Um, so these palettes are actually, I, well, they look pretty identical to what the Lucas 1862 and Schmincke watercolors use for their palettes. And those tins are not cheap. You can buy empty tins. I think if you bought like an empty tin like that, you'd end up paying about $25. So, um, so, you know, for the tin alone, I think it's a pretty good deal. But that, you know, that said, I got these for free from the company. Um, I just, you know, I want to want to let you know that I don't want you to assume I went out and bought these. I don't know if you can. Well, yeah, I know you can buy them now, but uh, it'll be a little bit hard to find for a while, probably. I was actually pretty impressed with their watercolor pencils last year, too, and their oil pastels. So the thing I like about Prima is that they seem to be able to bring a a good performing product. I mean, I don't know about light fastness, like how they're how they'll hold up. But as far as like the way the product performs, they're able to bring a good performing product at a very um, a very affordable price. And I think that's really important, especially when, you know, you're not sure if you're going to really love it and you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on a whim. Now, I am noticing that I was able to kind of soften that line between the orange and the yellow really easily, and that's something I was concerned with, that it wouldn't work very well because of the paper and the coloring books. I don't think this is the same paper, or maybe it's just extra sized or something. It doesn't seem, it doesn't feel the same. It feels much slipperier and much, much nicer to work on. So just to just to give you that that bit of information. Now for some shadows here, I think I want to darken that a little bit. I think I'm going to use a blue. I think I'll go with um, this blue in the tropical. It looks kind of like a Prussian blue. See that there? I'm going to add that with a little bit of the uh, orange. I feel like I need some shadows in here, so I'm going to go right in with that. I think I'll give some of that to the stem too. You gotta be careful, you don't want to muddy it, but sometimes you need a little bit of shadow and you want it to match what you've been doing, so adding the opposite is a way you can do that. And it makes the other color seem more vivid because of the contrast. I actually just, uh, I will swish my brush in my water. I'm afraid, I would turn my paint here on, but I want to make sure you can see it really well, so I'm kind of just going to be awkward here. I did that the other day, and I totally stuck my hand in my paint and got this big green blob in the sky. It was like this pretty magnolia I was painting, and, uh, and I had to put a leaf there because I completely just, I couldn't, I couldn't lift it up off the sky. It was a, it was a mess, but it, it was a teachable moment. I was filming at the time, so it turned into a teachable moment. <laughs> I have a lot of teachable moments on my channel, if you haven't noticed. And I'm just, you know, like, because I, I had planned this not to have to do a lot of lifting, I'm just kind of, actually, I'm kind of filling in like I would a coloring page. 
these are actually I you know I do like these little uh these little things like a tack on the wall and call it a day I like that making this one a little bit lighter so it stands out from the um, from the petal behind it I might have to add more of a shadow on the other petal but or go into my watercolor pencil or something I'm not gonna worry about it yeah, look at that. I'm able to lift up the stuff that I've already put down on this paper. So this does seem different than the um, than the stuff in the watercolor coloring book, which is which is good. And I don't think you know. I I really would just rec I would recommend that if you're going to get the watercolor coloring book, use the watercolor pencils. the The paints are more vivid than the pencils, but I just think like if you're unless you're somebody that does not mind being ex like very wild. And you don't because some of the designs are just so detailed. Um, if you're someone who wants to really stay within the lines, then I think you would be happier using your watercolor pencils. And the Primo ones work great. I, I was very impressed with the Primo watercolor pencils um, when I got them last year because you know they're twelve dollars, twelve, twelve ninety nine, eleven ninety nine, something like that, a set, and um, and they perform really well and they're vivid and um, I've used them mostly for cards I'm trying to think about or for just for sketching in something I'm gonna paint so I'm trying to think if I've had them anywhere where I would have had them in direct light and I can't think of any instances like that so I have no idea like how light fast they are but um, but as far as like performance using them in like something that's good, not gonna be in direct light card scrapbook page I think you're fine that's the only thing about a lot of craft companies um, they don't have light fast information on their products you know they'll have acid acid information make sure it's acid free and everything but they won't have the light fast info it would be great if they could get that I think it's probably because they're they're manufactured probably more more overseas in, in like uh, in Asia than in you know Europe and they just don't have that information available all right, I'm going to move around here and do the, pretty much the same thing I've been doing. Maybe I'll, you know what, maybe I'll turn and I'll, and I'll work on this one up here. I'm going to wet the petal this time. Hope this isn't going too slow for you. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the... Um, comments and I will go and check back for those and if you are happen to be reading the comments and you have the answer to somebody's question go ahead and leave it that's super helpful sometimes it's a little time little time before I can get in there and and uh, an answer and that's always appreciated a little bit of green there sharing is caring sharing your experiences so you can kind of see how these little guys want to pop right out of the pan there <laughs> You could glue them. I probably wouldn't bother. It's up to you. I'd probably just, uh, if I was going to maybe just a little double-sided tape or something so you can remove them later. What I do, uh, you know, I have never ordered half pans. Like when I, when a set runs out, I just, um, I just fill it with whatever tube I have in the approximate color. It doesn't have to be exact. Just like, you know, if it's a ultramarine, make sure you use like a red base blue. If it's a Prussian blue make sure you use a green base blue make sure you just you know keep it in the same family if there's still a little paint left but you're gonna be you're, you're gonna be all set although um, who knows maybe Primo will come out with a with a refill for these generally craft companies don't though I think it's because with in crafting the trends kind of like come and go so quickly that I know it's craft companies tend to um, Kind of jump on a bandwagon they get the product out and then and then that's that and then it even gets discontinued sometimes and then they're on to the next thing whereas art supply companies are kind of in it for the long haul they've been making these products for years it's not so much a trend as it is a staple product and then they keep um they keep supporting it and and making refills available and because once they've hooked you on their product they want you to keep coming back obviously I lost my good pencil sharpener. I don't know what I did with it. I was looking frantically for it because I wanted to sharpen some of these before I started. I had to use a knife. I feel like such a Luddite. I need my technology. I need my good sharpener. 
There we go. You can actually you can actually paint around the edge if you want to because these are on a um, they're on a panel. I wouldn't. I would just kind of carry the, whatever the part of the design it ends on around to the edge. I wouldn't fuss about it too much, but. I mean, because so that's going to look kind of cool on your wall. But that's just something. I'm not going to do that for all this. I just wanted to kind of show you that. Now, if I want to get some more color, more contrast, I can go in a little bit of this red color. It's almost like a, um, oh, it's like a permanent, not permanent rose. It's like a, um, like a rose red or a quinacridone magenta. Throw some of that in there. I can also do that over here on this guy. And some of the um, shadow areas. Just remember with these brushes, they're going to continue to feed water as you go. So you might want to have something handy to blot it on, blot your um, brush on. If you're not working quick enough to use up that water as you go. I just want to make sure I don't overwork this. I feel like I'm getting into overwork territory. So I'm going to scoot down to this guy down here at the bottom. And I like, I kind of like the wetting the petal and then dripping in the color. So I think I'm going to do more of that. So you, that way you can also see how much it's going to, it's going to flow. It's not super flowy. They're very much like the Gansey Tambe in that, um, in that respect, probably because of the fillers that are in the paint. You know, and that's what that's where the price difference comes. Like when you're looking at artist quality paint, and you see there, like, wow, that tube is like twenty five dollars. That's crazy. But um, it's because you are getting a paint with minimal fillers. You're getting a paint that's mostly binder and pigment, and um, and the pigment is the like the actual mineral. So if it's ultramarine blue, you're looking at like lapis lazuli. And if it's, um, and that's going to be more expensive than yellow ochre, which is an iron based pigment. So when you're, when you're getting into student grade paints, they, they sometimes will use some of those minerals, um, but they'll cut it way down and they'll use extenders to kind of make up the bulk of the, um, of the paint. And then sometimes they use dyes, synthetic dyes and pigments to um, get the same color, but then you lose some of the granulation, like I was mentioning at the beginning of the uh, review, how it kind of didn't granulate um, in some, you know, like like your traditional artist watercolors would. So, you know, that's, they, you know, are able to make a paint at a more cost effective price point that way. I am going to turn this as I go because I do find it's a little bit easier for me to to get in here. But I don't find, I find that I can re-wet the um, pigment a lot easier on this than in the coloring book. Um, I found the colors mix pretty well. Um, some colors I, that kind of, when I see them, I think, oh, student set, you know, and that would be like the, the pastel colors, like the pastel pink in this set and the pat and the kind of the pastel aqua. Uh, but I found the aqua is really nice for, um, blending with, and also that, that gray though. I mean, those colors just look like student colors to me and just be, you know, cause I have kids, they have paint. I kind of, you know, you notice some simil similarities, um, so, you know, I might end up taking these apart and, you know, making like one set of the colors I'm really most likely to use. Then again, my kids have used, have been loving this and I might just let them use them because I have so many paints. These wouldn't be my favorites just because I have other preferences already, but I think they're definitely a good starter set for somebody. Um, I did want to mention, because there is, I did not see, let me get, grab one of those boxes. I didn't see anywhere. Maybe there is. I just want to double check. Um, I don't see ASTM ratings on these, and it does say not for zero to fourteen years on here. So, and these are made in Korea, so I, I have no idea what their you know toxicity standards are. So, if you are gonna let your kids use these, now my kids are used to using arts quality materials. They know that if they're like when they're done, they wash their hands before they eat anything. Um, you don't eat and paint at the same time. You know, my kids know that, 
if you're you're thinking about getting something like this for your children, you need to make sure that they are good about washing their hands when they're done. They're not putting their brushes in their mouths um, because there is no there was no toxicity rating on these. Now they're 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 student grade, so I would reckon they're probably pretty safe, but they're made in another country and there is no like. AP non-toxic certification on them or anything, so it could have just been an oversight, but I'd better, rather be safe than sorry. I wouldn't want you to go pick these up for your kids because they're a lower priced option and then, you know, have somebody get blood poisoning or something. I mean, not to say that these have lead in them. I mean, maybe white would be the problem or some like really pastel block out color. Sometimes they add lead to paint to make them more opaque. Um, and I'm not saying that's the case here at all. I don't want to like imply that, but I just want to say that it says not for under age under 14. So just wanted to put that out there so that so that you are aware because sometimes you don't see that stuff if you're ordering online, you just don't have the information. I'm having fun with this. I mean, it's not a terribly difficult uh, picture to paint. I'm going to put a background in here. This tutorial is ending up being a lot longer than I intended it to be, so sorry about that, guys. I didn't uh, didn't mean for a super long video. Hope that's okay once in a while. Once in a while, like every time I do a painting video. <laughs> And we'll get that guy in there. Just a, you know, I'm using that little bit of red to make it pop out from the petal next to it. And then I'm gonna clean my brush, just wipe it on my towel, squeeze out some water, wipe it on my towel, grab some yellow. And add the yellow in and then just blend it back. So I am happy that this that the canvas panels here, the watercolor canvas which is paper, it's not canvas, um, unlike the like the Frederick's watercolor canvas. I am happy that I can um, blend a little bit better on these because I did not, I, I deliberately chose a picture that I wasn't going to have to blend very much on. So, um, so there is that. Sorry about that, it's school vacation and, uh, and my daughter just popped in for a quick second. Okay, so now I want to put a background in. You could just leave it plain, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to try out maybe this really big brush here. I'm going to squeeze some water through it on my paper towel because I actually, I'm just going to rinse it in my water bucket to remove any sizing. There's some sizing in the flat brushes. I didn't notice any in the rounds, but you'll want to rinse that out. You might even want to wash it out with a little bit of soap and water. Um, and I'm going to just wet the background and we're going to see how the colors will flow in the background here. And just wetting everywhere I want the pigment to go. That is kind of nice with the water brush because I can just kind of um, squeeze it out. Now look at this. I'm scrubbing over the watercolor pencil lines there and they are lifting right away. So that's good. I'm just going to get this uh, big area that touches wet first. And I think with the, with the flats, you do need to squeeze. Maybe it's just because I'm wetting this really big area, but it does seem like I need to squeeze the uh, the flats to get the paint, the water to flow more than with the rounds that kind of feed on their own. But I, I think that might also be because I'm trying to fill this large area. Okay. So I think I'm going to use some of this like tur turquoise color, the color that I said was kind of like trademark student grade set, but I think it's kind of a pretty color and we're going to get some of that in there. Could, it could also be because it's like an, like an Asian um, manufactured set in Eastern watercolor, which are, they are different. Eastern watercolors are more uniform. They tend to be a little chalkier. Um, they're more matte. They tend to look a lot more in the pan, like the color they actually are, versus Western watercolors. And I'm going to go with this nice, um, almost like a thalo or Prussian blue. Now that is not flowing as well. So I'm going to have to help it. So if I was using like M. Graham's here or Turner watercolors, they would kind of whoosh out on that wet surface. I'm not getting so much of that. 
Um, these behave a lot more like, you know, your Ganzai Tambe. I would say if you were trying to decide between the Ganzai Tambe and the Primas, I would go with whatever palette you like the looks of the most, quite frankly, because I think that they could be pretty interchangeable. Um, the Ganzai Tambe might be a little longer, uh, slower to wear. The paint seems to be a little bit harder in the um, cakes and I think it might take a while uh, longer to use them up, but, um, <clears throat> pardon me, um, but then again, maybe not. It does take quite a while to use up a pan of watercolor, I will tell you that. And again, going in with these same colors, just letting them kind of flow into their thing. Um, the thing that would be an advantage to stampers here is that because they don't want to flow and whoosh around, you're going to have a little more control. And I think that probably is due to the fact that these are student paints, student grade paints. Even though they say artists on the, on the box, I really would not call them an artist grade paint. Um, and so if you are working on like a coloring book or like on your, um, like a rubber stamped image where you've got small areas, these are going to be a little bit easier to control, just like the Ganzai Tampes are. Now, when you can see on some of these paints, especially like that red and that blue, that there's like a divot in there. I've actually used up enough to make a divot and I've only had these over the weekend. So I think they might be a little fat, a little faster wearing than like a typical watercolor that would, you know, cost quite a bit more. So, you know, just, you know, just keep it in mind. I think, I think for the price, you can't really go wrong. I really love the tin. Um, I probably wouldn't buy the pans individually afterwards if they're available. I'd probably just order like a, like an artist's quality, like Windsor Newton or even like a Cotman or, you know, some other brand, or maybe even try like another brand that offers half pans because I have the tin for them. Um, but not to dissuade you from, from ordering the Prima ones if they are available or from getting these. I want to be extremely fair because I think these are good for the budget. I like to keep like a little bit, I don't want to have a, just a solid one color background. I want to have some different colors in there. And there you go. And when this is backgrounds dry, you can sign your name. And um, I think that's kind of a fun little project to do with these. I hope that gave you some good information. Oops. Hope that gave you some good information about the uh, sets here. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll give you another look at the pans. We've got the tropical set which has um, these really nice vibrant colors, good for mixing. It does not have a warm red, but it does have an orange, so there's that. It doesn't really have a warm green either. Um, that, that like That's kind of like greenish yellow, which is kind of, um, I'd rather almost have like a bright lemon yellow. And here you get your classics, which are kind of like your paint box colors that more of like what a, what a kid would be in a kid's palette. But um, but there you go. And there's also the Decadent Pies, which I don't have, which has more of your earth tones. Um, I don't know if I'd buy all three. I'd probably buy the Tropical ones, I think is the, probably the most useful set. And then you could always buy a couple half pans and stick them in the middle of your palette to round out your set, like maybe a lemon yellow and a cad red um, and a sap green. And then you'd have a really nice collection there. I like that yellow ochre too, very pretty. And um, I'll, have to, I'll have to try washing my... Uh, palette with some soap to see if that staining comes off. I want to thank you so much for watching. Sorry this tutorial ended up being so long. Oh, one thing I wanted to do was actually paint in the stamens, and I think I'm going to do that. Um, I think I'll use that blue that I had, mix it with that red that I already have on my palette, and I'm just going to paint those, those in there. There we go. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up if so, and until next time, happy crafting.